Hey guys, welcome to Systematic Chess Club. Once again, we are back with some theories on Queen's Gambit. We are continuing with the Queen's Gambit. And what we are looking at is that how to do it. So what is happening here? Uh, uh, we are trying to uh, cover the openings from the beginner's perspective and we are doing today Slav defense. So what is Slav defense? So Slav defense is D4, D5, C4 and c6 most of us know that but it is one of the primary defenses to the queen's gambit what is the history behind it and it has a history of around as early as 1590 so slav defense has been played uh, as early as 1519 and in 1920s it uh, started to be explored excessively and although Stenis was the first person to essay it in the official World Chess Championship of 1886, many masters of Slavic descent uh, helped develop the theory of this opening, including Alfin, uh, Alkaine, uh, Vidmar, and Bogo. Uh, they, they were the players who helped in the development of the theory, but in recent uh, World Championship around uh, 9th, 1935, and 1937 uh, between the Alkhani U uh, is known as uh, was played and uh, it became a modern defense to Queen's Gambit because Queen's Gambit was appearing to be very difficult to play so Slav defense was developed and it is also termed as modern defenses against uh, uh, Queen's Gambit so it has been played by 11 of the first 13 world champions so 11 of the first 13 world champions have mastered this defense in order to play from the white perspective if black opts for the Slav defense. That is very important. And this defense was particularly favored by Botvinnik, Simslav and the EU. And very recently uh, we have Vishwanathan Anand, the five times world champion. He has been doing it. He has mastered this opening uh, very quickly and uh, uh, Anand, Ivan Chuk, Lutier, Schott, uh, Nizel Schott is a great player of this opening and many top grandmasters uh, including use in six of the eight games, uh, Valdemir Kramnik. So our model games will be from the games of the Valdemir Karmik, Kramnik and Anand to explain and Karmnik uh, played uh, six of the eight games in 2006 world championship and in the other two he played the related semi-slav defense so we will be going through the theory part and let us switch to the board now so what is happening here is that now if you see the board uh, it is an introduction class and introduction class to the slav defense and how it goes let us see so what happens here so white goes for d4 black plays d5 and in the last class we discussed about the second variation that uh, black can play and now we white goes for c4 d5 d4 d5 c4 and now black plays c6 so what is the idea in this so how hope you all are doing well uh, and that is very important that uh, most of us are uh, having these uh, things over here and let me check everything is working correctly or not okay fine uh, i think uh, we are having the things in the order and the stream has started and please so now uh, my daughter was just talking to me i'm sorry uh, now we are having this uh, d5 d4 and c4 c6 idea and this is queen's gambit the parent entry is queen's gambit and uh, now we are having uh, uh, lots of uh, 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 okay so what is the idea in this opening uh, uh, let us try to understand the ideas in this opening. 
So originally considered a very less orthodox defense in the Queen's Gambit, this opening has stood as entirety in opening system. The Slav defense is very important. And the idea behind this defense is straightforward instead of locking in the light squad bishop on c8 because what happens that this square if you play decline so what is the difference if he plays you go there and he plays e6 so the light square bishop gets uh, the baby problem is the light square bishop in order to avoid that uh, black started uh, playing the theory of uh, c6 so that he can actually keep this idea of coming to bishop on either f5 or g4 and that is what main slav defense is all about that uh, the main uh, objective of black here is to play bishop f5 or bishop f4 activating his light square bishop and gaining some active counter play against the queen's gambit so he has not accepted the gambit he has declined declined it but he has a hidden motive when you are playing slav you have a hidden motive that you may capture it at some stage and that is very important that uh, let us see how it goes so uh, i will just begin the session and now we are starting so let us see so d4 d5 c4 and then c6 so black protects d5 motive number one and if white takes on d5 he is going to take it back and that is most of the times if this exchange happens then most of the times the result is draw because if exchange variation is played by white he loses the advance uh, his uh, gain advantage that he has by playing with the white but that is one way how the things can go up and now if suppose um, what else can black play so the idea is that the white main lines can be knight to f3 and this is slav defense and then knight to f6 so this is the slav defense main line and black plays the neutral developing move knight f6 uh, which is invariably the best square um, for the black knight in the slav you can say that Hi, we are having uh, Ishwat Khasmi and Parvez watching this and the knight exerts control over the e4 square. So e4 square is in control of this and it may at this stage you can capture it. He captures it back and this is usually the exchange variation that happens and that is how it goes on. So now if you see that what is going to happen next. So knight f3 and knight f6. One line is exchange over there and here uh, the best way for white is to play knight to c3 uh, developing and now if black is prepared he captures that uh, c4 pawn and then it becomes a problem so black breaks the symmetry and now once the symmetry is broken uh, there are likely chances that this will become a problem so in order to avoid this problem what white intends is to play a4 and so best move if at this move number four he captures outward you need to play a4 in order to prevent the b7 b5 idea and afterwards white will win this gambit pawn back as usually by either e4 or e3 depending upon what is permitted but now at this stage he gets an opportunity to play the bishop to f5 idea and controlling this very critical uh, sorry controlling this very critical diagonal and now he plays bishop to f5 
and the, this is the main slav move this is what why black intends to play and he becomes successful in playing this only after capturing this if without capturing this he plays this move then the likely chances is that he may not be in an active piece position so what we are going to do is we are going to discuss some of the games and some of the rare openings today and we will be trying to understand the fundamental ideas that are here and well this is the beginning that we have introduced ourselves and i must tell you about myself i am iqbal from systematic chess club i have a very small youtube channel and if you have not subscribed yet i request you to subscribe it and share and like and hit, don't forget to hit the bell button as this is uh, very important for us to happen that so now uh, let us move to some uh, uh, different things that what is uh, opening and what uh, is uh, if you see on the title just above here that moves d4 d5 c4 c6 this is slav defense and eco word is written there d10 and d19 what is that and parent word is written queen's gambit so we are doing queen's gambit how to play queen's gambit from white's perspective and black can defend it with queen's gambit decline or he can accept the gambit pawn or he can go for slav defense king's indian that we did in the last yesterday video and you can watch it there and you can learn the names of the openings and also the basic piece positions that is going to help you now ECO what is ECO so there is an encyclopedia of chess opening that is called ECO and all these moves have been taken from there so these moves are uh, documented in the encyclopedia of chess openings it is well documented and all the grandmasters and the good players who are trying to improve their chess have to go through this theory only playing won't improve your game you need to have the ideas of the middle game and the strategies behind these uh, listed openings in the encyclopedia of chess openings so who is the best player of slav defense that is my question to our viewers write down in the comment box if you can write it that whom do you consider uh, who is the role model whose games you can study to understand the slav defense so right now we see the slav mainline defenses we have seen and now we will go for some rare i will just revise the main line so that uh, those who have joined a bit later can understand it so d4 d5 c4 c6 this is slav defense and now white goes for knight f3 knight f6 so black tries to control on the e4 and also having this control with knight f6 and now if you go with knight c3 at this stage black takes this pawn and this is what the main slav is and in order to prevent this b4 idea you have to play this a4 and if you play the a4 this diagonal is taken up by black on f5 and so this is the main line and then you play immediately knight e5 and you look for f3 and e4 idea this is the slav mainline defense that how you have to play and now let us see some rare openings and then we will go through the model games that how it has been played and how it can be do so let us say d4 d5 c4 c6 this is slav defense knight f3 and now what if he captures it this is a modern line uh, played by many great players and uh, we need to understand that what is the probability uh, of playing this so at this stage black plans on keeping the pawn unlike the queen's gambit accepted develop quickly and we have to see these lines so let us go with a game uh, that will illustrate this rare line that what happens if he captures it so this game we have taken it from the european team championship uh, between cave and summer beaver and oh thank you for uh, commenting the systematic chess is wonderful a lot of thanks so now we will see this how if at move number four he accepts it so how you have to play this so the key position that can be reached from the queen's gambit accepted in fact that is how it came and become about its particular that how you have to see this so a has captured on uh, 
that's the idea that he has captured the gambit pawn and what you have to do so this is the model game you what you will play the best way to play is e3 now he plays b5 what are you going to do you have to do something if you go for some other way he has gained lots of space he is having very strong pawn structure how are you going to break that so this is the idea that we are discussing right now and now you immediately play a4 this is very important this idea is very important and if you play a4 uh, black in this game has played e6 so e6 has been played and now what you should do you have played a4 to break this pawn structure and you capture on b5 and he captured on b5 yet these two pawns are looking very dangerous and the third pawn is coming this pawn structure will be very strong and very robust how to get rid of that so that is the idea that how you have to get rid of it and yes those who have not subscribed yet you are requested to please subscribe uh systematic chess my 95 percent of the viewers are not subscribed and if you subscribe it that is going to help me your likes and your shares will put our channel to more number of people who can get benefited from the chess so right now if you see the pawn structure on the board how are you going to react to it what are you going to do so what is the best way to play here so immediately you go for b3 this is the best move right here b3 attacking the pawn structure and you have to do something active now either you get this pawn if he captures you get this pawn that is very important and also you are going to get this pawn so what is he going to do so he goes for at this stage he looks on this diagonal it is weak and you are under check so he goes for a check preventing some idea now he can push this pawn and what will you do so that is a problem alternate if he captures it you are going to give him a check and you win more material so black don't capture it if black playing captures it you are going to win more material so what he does black goes for a check now what to do it's a problem right now and what can be done right away so uh, definitely the pawn he is going to push and now what you are going to play what is the best move for you you need to see that what is going to be the best move for you and think on the board that how can you find the best move so bishop before check has come to you how can you prevent it so you may prevent it by knight you may prevent it by the bishop or you may prevent it by this knight so the best way to defend is preventing by this so that you have a control on this square twice if he moves you don't worry but what he did he captures it check now we have two three options again how to capture it back the best way is knight b captures it if this knight comes here this stays there not good you capture it now he plays a5 look at the position so these are the ideas you need to know now a slav is the modern defense in which kramnik won in the world championship in 2006 and he played eight times out of 11 matches so you need to prepare and now b capture c4 so you capture it and he pushes it he has two pass pawns so do you know what are pass pawns pass pawns are very important and black has been able to create the two pass pawns recently Viswanathan Anand defeated Magnus Carlsen in a blitz game using the same concept that we are showing you and now this is a black scanning idea definitely to get two pass pawns and he gets two connected pass pawns on the queen side but they are not so dangerous can you tell me why because white is ahead in development look at the board all these pieces are sitting at the base this is still not active the pawn is hindering this rook is not that active but it is doing some good work the knight has not been developed the knight has not been developed but white has got two very strong development and after bishop 
to some good location after some good location he is ready to castle he can also do castling but in development black is not doing that way but more also although he has two pass pawns but white has a very good control on the center and all the pawns are connected so in this way if you are going with these moves i will repeat these moves you are going to gain that advantage so d4 d5 c4 c6 knight f3 d capture c4 this is the variation we are looking at the early capture of the c4 uh, transposing to the accepted variation now you play e3 b5 this idea you need to play this if you don't play this it is going to be a very difficult for you to stop this pawns on the queen side now you play a4 he goes for e6 clearing the uh, diagonal for the bishop you capture he captures still he is having very strong three pawns on the queen side against one pawn and now you play immediately to attack the pawn structure because if you leave it there do something else it, he will come here this is quite is weak because you have uh, to look over the weak squares that is going to help you and now bishop comes check b bishop d2 bishop captures d2 and you capture a5 b captures c4 b4 two connected pawns but yet white is leading in uh, development and white has a very very good control of the center and uh, look at the boards that they are sitting ideal in the back now what happens you develop the bishop he develops the knight you castle he castles queen c2 so now you are also right now creating an attack on the king side so here in this opening when early take on c4 happens in the slav defense black tries to dominate with the two connected pawns on the queen side white tries to control the center and create an attack on the king side this is the basic idea that you should keep in the mind and let us move with the game quickly knight bd7 he now now you have two central pawns going ahead c5 bishop comes to the strong diagonal and now you put the bishop over there to take over that knight he goes there rook comes here so in the slav defense most of the times rook belongs on the c file remember this idea bishop comes you capture he captures and now you block at that pawn this is the move that you need to know that here this is square you are controlling and you don't want that pawn to come ahead because if you allow him to come this is an exception usually you block the pawns with the knight knight is the best blockaders of the pawn but here you block it with the rook this is the idea you have to keep in mind and now what happens rook a6 he also tries to develop the rook now you double the rooks and recently R. Pragnanda was playing and he doubled the rook on the a file and through which he was able to convert a victory uh, against uh, in the Fide Olympiad chess I don't remember the name of the player but you can look for that and this is now he also doubles it on the A file so black wants him to pursue these two pawns are a problem you have to be careful and now what you can do what is the idea look at the board what are your knights doing what are your knights doing you need to uproot this pawn and what can be done you have to defend it also what can be done so knight to b3 yes knight to b3 is the good move and now he defends the pawn and now you advance here so if he captures you are going to capture it so he cannot capture it he tries to develop in idea to come over here so maneuvering is going on this is a very very classical game that you need to try to understand the ideas behind it knight goes on e5 looking for some break knight comes you capture so why you played this knight so the idea is to uproot this pawn but you don't want the other defender to come so you come here with the idea to take it and you have the center so you capture he captures and now you play f3 so prior to capturing this you must play f3 because this pawn is 
double attack you don't want to lose it so these are the ideas that you have to keep in mind while playing slav defense that you need to keep your center protected and we are discussing on systematic chess that how to play slav defense the basic ideas the introduction the basic lines that can be important and yes if you have not subscribed yet please subscribe because uh, we are a very small youtube channel my 95% of the viewers are not subscribed and i request you to kindly subscribe to this channel if you are watching it and share it to more number of people because our idea is to spread it to more number of people that is the basic concept about the formation of this youtube channel and now what is going to happen queen c7 queen d2 what is the idea looking looking to get some breakthrough and now he plays h5 and this is not a good move because now you are going to get the back breakthrough and how you are going to get that breakthrough my dear viewers can you find the move can you find it see on the board pause the video keep thinking thinking is very important in chess as well as in life because unless you think you are not going to improve you have got the ability to think and you keep on thinking take your time to analyze your games and this is how you can improve and now d5 this is the right time to play d5 he has made a move but don't get deviated don't play something like this that is not required what is required is to get the breakthrough can he take this pawn no he cannot take this pawn because it is defended and if he captures it you get two connected pawns what he is going to do he has no other choice he captures it you capture it and look at the board who is better at highest level you should resign at this stage because you have two connected pawns and your two connected pawns are well blocked here and a very strong base this knight is not doing much he needs to come he cannot capture it because you will lose a piece you will lose the game the queen is doing good and now he plays it h4 looking to get some break and now you attack see these two pawns how much capable they are the two connected pawns he comes there now the queen is blocking the pawn so that is where black is almost at disadvantage and if you see the analysis board black is not doing good and certainly that the right time to capture it he attacks it he captures it it's a sacrifice but yes the attack is coming and now it's a checkmate so conclusion it is risky for black to give up the center with d captures c4 and for b5 so let me let me let me go to the initial stage what happened there let me let me let me toggle it so these are the moves that you should keep in the mind that how we where we are developing the theory that what if black goes for taking this line so this is the line that is not preferable for black if he captures it you immediately go for e3 first he comes to defend it you go for a4 don't worry for these two pawn connected pawns why because he has the two connected pawns but you are leading in development and you are also having a very strong position so this is the first variation now what if the let us this is a d capture c4 one variation now let us see knight a6 so what happens here so now d4 d5 c4 c6 knight f3 knight f6 knight c3 and d capture c4 now uh, he has again gone for this uh, variation but now you have to at this stage if he captures you have to play a4 this is the idea from white but now strategically good evening navin ji uh, very welcome to the channel a very very good evening sir hope you are doing good in life and great in chess and uh, now at this stage after a4 he don't go for this b4 he has realized that it is not giving me any advantage he goes for after a4 he goes for knight to a6 so what is this variation called 
This variation is called Simslov variation of Slav defense. And the idea in this variation has a motive. It's not uh, just a move. It's a sideline, but not without its logic. It has logic. And the knight has a fine square on b4, and that is what he is looking for. b4, a5 idea, planting that knight over there because it can be an outpost. There are no pawns over here to push it back. A minor piece will be required. And the active. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, the classes we are working very hard day and night so that we can spread the systematic ways of playing chess throughout the globe and i will request our dear viewers that if they have not subscribed yet i request you to please subscribe i am a very small youtube channel and your subscription are going to help us your like and uh, shares uh, will help us reach more number of people and now we are going to see that knight a6 variation so he has captured early capture has happened i will put it in blue this is the variation we are discussing and he has certain motives that uh, how he can do it and now what can be done so let us go again very quickly a very strong match uh, in 99 played between dairen rovinovic and mikhalsvi and this is a model game for us how to play this Variation that Smyslo variation of Slav defense. How to play that? So immediately at this stage, after a4, the best move for you is to immediately take the center. He is going to come here. Immediately you cannot stop him from coming there. That's why this is the cunning idea, the rare line that Black has opted. Smyslo, a very strong grandmaster, developed this idea. And now you play e4 and he the bishop at the g4 has been played. Playing the Slav defense from the black's perspective is the idea that he don't want this bishop to spare in the entire game, which happens in the Queen's Gambit declined. And now what can you do? You capture your pawn back, he captures it, and you capture it. So here the idea is that you can capture it from the g file. So what happens if queen captures because queen captures then queen captures this so this you cannot do most of the time it happens you don't want your pawn to get obstructed you capture it uh, get on the double pawn he has almost equalized it so what can you do you don't capture by that queen you keep your center intact and don't worry for the double pawn it is going to help you I will show you how so now e6 he looks for the bishop coming pinning the knight you develop this bishop over here taking control of this pawn and now you can develop at these two squares and now he goes for bishop you castle first he develops at the bishop e7 and now you go here and once again we see this instructive maneuver why you move here you will see why we move there because it is very important that this maneuvering is very important the the king should be placed over here and put the rook over here attacking this file and you can produce some pinning idea if he castles it is a problem for him so now he goes there and you put the rook on g1 so this is the idea that <coughs> you will be applying I'm sorry, I need to have some water. So the rook gets the open file. Right now the rook gets the open file. And so now he moves, get it read, so the bishop don't comes over there because that the game will be immediately over. And now you immediately launch your pawn ahead. He attacks the center, you capture it, he moves there, he, don't, he cannot capture it immediately because you were having a control but now he is having double attack. What to do next? What to do next? Don't worry about it, think for an alternative plan. If you have a good move, look for the better move. That is the idea in chess and you go for e5, attacking the knight. He moves back attacking this pawn thrice he cannot take it but now you move the knight 
looking to get a breakthrough b6 queen h5 what is the idea the rook is here the queen is here what are you going to do it seems that the bad days of black has come he activates looking to get some breakthrough on this file and this is pin what are you going to do you defend it look at these pawns the double pawns are looking much more dangerous because these are the ideas that you have to apply look to try to keep the center in your hand that's why you are playing queen's gambit that's the beauty of queen's gambit that's why we teach our students our fellow players and that's why myself also uh, have been trying to learn this queen's gambit and i am primarily a player of queen's gambit i am a fan of queen's gambit by heart and now knight c2 it's just uh, he is doing this and can you find this the double dot the double explanation mark is a sign of good move how this is a good move can you find it this is a powerful finish you have given him the rook take it if you want what are you going to do he captures again a good move he captures you capture check he captures what are you going to do check he goes there and now how will you defend it how will you defend it let me repeat it let me repeat it why this is a powerful move he looks to attack the rook don't move it right now you look for the break calculate the next five moves in your mind what happens you capture it he captures it then you can immediately come to a check so what happens he attacks not a good move why you have taken the pawn those pawns who are defending why this is a good move because it's a mate if you capture it suppose he captures it capture it he, he can capture this also he can capture this. suppose he captures this it's a mate so that's not good so you have gone there this is a great move you are not worried about your pieces because you are right now going for a strong finish he captures it you go for a check he comes here now check how he will defend himself so that is the idea that you should be looking for and that's how it finishes and now that's uh, the uh, variation that we discussed so uh, again this idea is also not that good he captures and now he comes here so this Smyslow variation knight a6 variation is also not good now let us see the bishop g4 variation so these are some rare lines we are going through this very quickly and also we will go through the games uh, tomorrow also we will be doing these uh, slab variations with the games and how to play it if these videos are helping you don't forget to subscribe we are a very small youtube channel and you like it share it with your friends and the ideas you can uh, share write your comments that how it has helped you now the next variation d4 d5 c4 c6 this is slav defense knight f3 knight f6 knight c3 and now he captures it so he captures it he has this motive so slav defense you be ready that he will capture it at some stage now you play a4 so you have these these moves are fixed now from white's perspective and now bishop g4 so now he has gone for bishop g4 what are you going to do bishop gets um, out that's good for black but how can you take the center what is the move that you are going to do are you worried of this bishop or are you more interested in taking the center so take the center with e4 and let us see that in an example the next match uh, that was played in 1994 that we have taken as a role model game Kulman and Tate correspondence game 1994 this is the model game for our this opening so d4 d5 c4 c6 love defense knight f3 knight f6 knight c3 d capture c4 a4 bishop g4 so we have seen this b5 idea we have seen this 
96 idea and now we are seeing this primarily if he captures it outward on the gambit pawn so what are you going to play what is your idea so can you immediately do something one of my colleague in systematic chess he exploits this position so well that the opponent has no time to do anything he goes knight to e5 attacking the bishop bishop h5 he tries to safeguard the bishop he has somehow managed to come out and now he don't want to get the bishop off the board with the knight this is the standard move however white would be aware of the trickle line if he plays knight bd7 and if you capture it knight captures it e4 e5 this is a good move and now queen captures this and e captures this and this is a good compensation for the piece because now look at the board these pawns are looking very very effective and don't forget that every pawn is a potential queen that is the idea so be aware of this idea uh, that you don't get capturing it prior to that so what if he you play f3 first okay now he goes back attacking the strong knight this is a weak knight this is a strong knight what will you do and what if black plays e6 this is a mistake why because now you play g4 and it's too strong so you are going to get this bishop off the board and your work will be completed now f3 idea this idea is very important at move number seven in this game and now he plays knight to fd7 in order to get rid of your knight but you capture the pawn that is the idea so if he attacks your strong knight you get your pawn and that is the idea in going over there but immediately you have to play this f3 in order to play e4 he goes there you get the pawn he attacks the center you take the center with e4 he goes for a check you defend it with g3 queen f6 you capture it he captured this attacking your queen you go for a check he comes there you take the queen of the board and now you have forked the rook immediately winning the game at the highest level uh, this is going to be a victory for white immediately comes there but you don't take that rook again a good move again a good move you are not taking that rook you are safeguarding that knight over there making the black's position more vulnerable and now knight c5 attacking that pawn you safeguard your rook he comes there attacking your bishop you safeguard your rook he attacks now you take the rook he takes you take he takes and now he takes he takes look at the board you have this pass pawn can you make it a win the knight is obstructed how it is going to happen now he goes back you come back so this was a good move why in order to escape this knight it's not trapped because you played that that is the idea that you should be looking for king to e7 rook d1 attacking the bishop he captures you capture and look at the board the engine says that white is at a very very much advantage the king will capture this suddenly but he's not doing that he develops it you come back he develops it you take a pawn why it's a good move because if he captures it you are going to win it and getting the rook at a very strong position he captures it you go for a check he captures it you get the pawns of the board and now you have entered into the end game and at this stage black has to resign because you are going to take it the knight has nowhere to go this is blocked if he comes here you capture it and that is winning for white now before entering into the main line let us go to another sidelines so main line we will be doing tomorrow and what time it is i think we have 15 more minutes it's a one hour session tomorrow we will be doing it the main lines in the slav defense now we are doing the 
e6 variation so what is this e6 variation d4 d5 c4 c6 knight f3 knight f6 knight c3 and he captures outward we are looking at this variation we have done if he plays b4 you immediately you, your idea after this move your idea is a4 now he can play this this and he can play this so we have done these three model games today and now we are going to see you play a4 he plays e6 this is also a line which has been played most of the times 80 percent of the times it has been played and a very solid way to play uh, allowing the dark square bishop to move ahead and now let us take a model game to play this so what variations we have done let us go for this uh, if he after capturing he plays e6 why, how you can handle it so what are the ideas in the middle game so d4 d5 hope you are remembering it also and now you go for knight f6 uh, knight f3 knight f6 and knight c3 he captures it you go for a4 this is your main move when he captures it if you don't play that you may end up in trouble remember that now he plays e3 and this is the model game what are you going to do after doing three problems can you find the correct move here what is the idea in the rear lines the idea is to take the center the idea is to take the center how are you going to take that center how are you going to take that center that center yes yes of course now you know it yes e4 e4 is the idea the natural move white grabs the center most players go with e3 instead planning on getting more of a queen's gambit accepted position with the bishop attacking c4 but however a pawn allows black to put a piece on b3 and b4 since it is already pushed too far to defend so you have these weak squares and you have to handle these b3 and b4 are the weak squares in your line and now what are you going to do so e4 has been played black played in this game bishop to b4 you can't stop it you again move it immediately attacking the knight he comes there so you have these weak squares he can exploit it how to handle it bishop d2 now he plays b5 now he plays b5 so immediately he has not played he played this played the knight over here after being attacked and now he is looking more strong black is being very forcing in this game and how to uh, only way black to have a chance in this game is by playing that b5 and now knight to g5 good move not dubious move good move why what is the intention of this move can you find it why you have gone over here because you can produce a checkmate threat if he castles he goes back you come there you come there he has not castled but yet you are producing a checkmate threat he safeguards it you enter into his camp night before you castle long side time is crucial in sharp, sharp positions if you don't do it uh, you have to simultaneously develop put the rook on the d file and also castle this is a good move as per the stockfish engine newell 14 this is a good move if bishop has gone to f8 what you have to do let me tell you you have to subscribe this channel okay so if you have not subscribed it subscribe it i will come back the bishop has gone to f8 so what are you going to do now your queen is under attack what can be your move where you will push it h3 correct move h6 knight joins there if he captures you capture it bishop to e7 attacking the knight you take b5 he develops on a5 black penetrates with his queen he is trying to get some 
uh, position, but even he has come a queen under a pin. Now his knight cannot move for the next move. You capture it. He go for a check. You move up. Go for a check. You go down. He go for a check. Queen c2. Check. Now you don't want to lose by repetition. The year the game was played, the Ukrainian Championship was organized as a knockout tournament. Azov had lost the first game and had to play for a win, even if he knew it was suicidal. So, but can he get this position into a win? He did not win for draw. Check. He went there. A mistake. Given the rook. Get back his pawn finally. Given the rook. Given the knight. A check. Bishop is gone. The knight is gone. How can you win? Check. How can you win from this position? You have given the bishop. And at this stage, white resigned. So what is the problem? This is the sharp gambit. E4 is worth a try. White quickly gets a great attacking position in most lines, but he should study the queen e7 idea, which seems to be the black's best bet. And if queen comes to a7, you have to draw it. You cannot play this move. So where is the fault? Everything was fine. But at this stage, you have played the perfect system. You have to go for a draw. That is very important. And my mother is saying hello. Assalamu alaikum, mommy. Uh, she is watching it. She always watches these videos and she boosts me up. And so as of today, what we did, let us revise it. So D4, D5, C4, C6, Knight F6, Knight F4, Knight C6, and he captures it. Black can go after A4 is the best move here. Black can play b5 and this is called ala pin variation black can play knight to a6 this is called sims law variation black can play bishop to g4 this is called astenier variation and black can play e6 and this is called salt bf variation and uh, now this is how uh, tomorrow we will be doing I am getting a call I am sorry uh, I will check it uh, immediately and I will just just come and so well I am back again and we were discussing some uh, moves uh, that the main line tomorrow we will be doing and what will be that and we will be doing four model games d4 d5 c4 c6 knight f3 knight f6 knight c3 d captures a4 bishop f5 so bishop comes to f5 from the black and now you go to knight a5 e6 and there are two major lines the complicated e6 lines and knight bd7 lines so black can play two more ideas he can play this or he can play this so tomorrow we will be doing that and so my dear viewers uh thank you so much for being here and uh, really uh we are having uh, so much uh, great uh, subscribers that we have reached 500 plus we are looking to reach uh, 1000 subscribers and if you are here please uh, subscribe like and share these videos and for off now bye bye take care and see you soon very soon and that's it that's it if you have not subscribed yet subscribe and thank you